What's up, G Speeders? Right in the middle of switching my class one to AR45 axles, and I'm about to mirror the front motor mount. So Team Garage Hacks has a mirrored skid plate and drilling kit that I'll be using. I just got a couple screws left to take out to remove the front motor mount. So remove the mount and the spacers. Don't lose those. We're going to use those again. Next I'll take off the slipper pads and spur gear. Save the nut washer, bearing spacer and bearing. And the two slipper pads and spur gear, save them off to the side. And we're going to take out the three three millimeter screws that hold the case together. Oh yeah, using my cool new G-Speed X tools. So just remove the triangle shaped case. Make note of the way it came off because it's going to go right back on the same way. Then remove the bearing and shaft. You're basically flipping the shaft around and inserting it right back in the hole it came out of. Right through the bearing. Make sure the other bearing goes on. And then the triangle shaped case. Right back on the way it came off. It seats on perfect. Team Garage Jacks did a hell of a job designing this piece. Everything works great. Put the three three millimeter screws back in. Making sure that triangle case piece is seated. Put the slipper pad back on the shaft and the bearing and spur gear, other slipper pad. Easier to put the bearing on the shaft first, get it centered, and then put the spur gear on, and the other slipper pad. Or slipper plate, I guess. Spacer bearing, washer, and nut. Tighten it up. Make sure everything spins good. Now as you can see with it mirrored, you put it back up on the shock hoops. You can see the line the holes don't line up. 
So we got to drill a new hole using the drilling jig that Christopher Schumann created. That actually, you take this little triangle piece for the B1C1, comes in the drilling kit, and you line it up. So the original two mounting holes line up perfectly and you basically use one and you could use two of those holes to keep the drilling jig tight while you mark and drill the new hole which is the one closer to the shock body that you see there so I'm gonna put a temporary screw and nut there to clamp the jig in place so I know it's perfectly lined up before I mark the spot where I'm going to drill a new hole. You can put two screws in, the two original mounting holes, um, but I just put one and just snug up the one and just make sure you look down through the other mounting hole and make sure everything's lined up perfectly. And if it's lined up perfectly, the edge of the drilling jig is going to line up perfectly with the edge of the shock hoop. You can see how it lines up. You're going to mark that new hole right there. So I'll mark the hole. Making sure those holes are lined up. There's my new, where my new hole is going to go. And I could take the drilling jig off and use it on the other side and line it up the same way. Just make sure the edge of the little triangle piece, which is the drilling jig, lines up with the outside of the shock hoop. When you're lining yours up, you can run this video again and pause it right where I'm holding it up and you can see there's a there's a little flat spot on one side of the triangle of this jig that um, goes towards the shock body. I'm going to tighten the jig up on the other side. Mark my new spot where I'm going to drill on that shock hoop. down through the other mounting hole make sure it's perfectly lined up mark the hole there it is so I'm gonna drill Take the drilling jig off. It's not needed anymore. Only one of those little triangle pieces comes with the mirrored skid plate that's basically just a little lineup tool. Put it to the side. You don't need it. Now, as you can see, Check, make sure you have the hole lined up. See the two mounting holes, kind of hard to see in this video, will line up once I drill our new spot. Suck up an eighth inch drill bit. the other side making 
sure you're exactly center of your hole that you mark. Otherwise you'll have a heck of a time getting that screw into the motor mount. Take our spacers, the forward motor mount that has been mirrored, get our original mounting screws that we're holding the front motor mount in. I usually put a screw through the shock hoop and then slide the spacer on. Get a spacer. And the spur gear, it's going to go towards the front of the truck. The nut's basically going to go right over the dual servo mount or the back of it. Put the other spacer in the other side. Perfect fits, you just gotta just slip it in there and such a good fit it'll basically stay there while you get the screw lined up and ready to go. Push that, rotate that spacer down to where the other screw is going to go through into the forward motor mount. another small tool and you just spin that spacer so it's lined up with your other mounting screw hole. Might need to rotate the forward motor mount back and forward just a tad until the screw gets started. Do not force the screw in. Make sure everything's lined up perfectly before you start threading into the aluminum front motor mount. That's it. That's it for the Ford motor mount. But now, mirrored motors on the other side. Drive shaft's gonna come out of the transfer case, which will be slid on the other side of the skid plate with the mirrored skid that's not in yet, which I'll show you here in a second. As you can see here, you get this screw out of the way. But the mirrored skid basically has the mounting holes on the other side of the rig on the driver's side so the transfer case sits on driver's side and drive shaft lines up nicely with the offset diff of the AR45 axles which is on driver's side. There it is. So I just switch out this skid plate later. Slap in the transfer case. Take these AR44 axles off and get my AR45s on because they are the new thing.